In this video, we will learn about Google Firebase. It's an AI based platform to make apps which can be made using AI. So what Google has done is it has integrated Google Gemini, which is the AI tool of Google into Firebase. To understand what Google Gemini is, you can look at one of our previous videos. Let's start in this video and understand what Firebase Studio is all about. So in order to start, I'll just click here at the top. It will open the Firebase Studio for me. You can accept the terms and conditions. You can opt out to receive email updates and research studies. After you confirm that, this is the home page of the Google Firebase Studio. Now, what it does is, you can just enter a prompt, any prompt, and it will make an app for you. And you can test that app in this Firebase Studio itself. And you can make life changes to this app. So let's see how we do that. What I'm going to do here is I'll only enter the name of the app that I want to build, which is a calorie counter to track the calories we eat every day. Now there's a button called as improve prompt. Now what Gemini will do is it will describe the app that we want to make. A user-friendly calorie counter app for daily dietary management. Key features include logging food items with calorie values, viewing daily total intake, tracking meals, and setting or monitoring a daily calorie goal. Use a fresh green and white color scheme. So I'm happy with this prompt. If you want, you can edit, you can edit the colors, you can edit the features. You can do anything, which will also see how to do that. After this is ready, let's prototype with AI. So in about five to 10 seconds, this window has opened where our prompt is shown here. And now this is Gemini making a plan or a blueprint of how this app should look like. And if you scroll down, you will see the features are mentioned here. Food logging allows users to log food items along with their calorie values manually. Calorie calculation with AI. Now, if you hover your cursor here, it says uses Gemini. What it will do is automatically calculate the total calorie intake for the day based on logged food items. What is the AI tool? When the user attempts to add food item to the log without an explicit calorie value, retrieve calorie information for food items from the internet if available and automatically add these to the entry. Otherwise, prompt the user for the information. So this is something that has been done automatically by Gemini. I don't have to write a code myself. Daily overview, meal tracking, goal setting, and progress visualization to visually represent calorie intake progress throughout the day. So you can probably set a target. Let's see how that goes. Style guidelines, these are the colors, uh, the layout should be clean, intuitive, typography, what should be the font, and how should everything look like. The style guidelines are mentioned here. What stack is it going to use? It is going to use Gemini and GenKit for AI. Let's see what that is. Gemini is our traditional Gemini by Google. The AI model GenKit is an open source framework from Google that provides a unified API to access AI models and streamlines AI logic to use image generation and more. So basically it's an it's an API that will be used to invoke Gemini into the app. UI is TypeScript, Next.js and Tailwind CSS. Now, these are some coding platforms where you can uh, build an app, but here it's being done through AI itself. Now, there are two ways in which I can edit this plan. The first is by clicking here on customize. And I can edit all of this. Now, the blueprint which was shown more compact here, here you can see the exact uh, point uh, where you can edit something. Let me go back. Or the other way you can do is by describing the changes that you want to make down here. So let's start with prototyping this app now. Now, the code is being written. If you see, there are different files, directories in this environment. 
it is doing some reasoning of why this code should make sense. So AI is doing all the job for you, which required a lot of time before. If, if you sit to code all of these things, it would take you a lot of time. So after waiting for about four to five minutes, the code has been completed and you can see the app on the left side. So the pa panel that was there at the center now has gone towards the right. You can see all the directories, all the files, uh, coding files that are there for the app. On the right side, it shows the number of lines added, and the number of lines subtracted from each of these files from the previous checkpoint. So Gemini must have committed to a certain level of code. And from there, it would have kept adding and subtracting features. That would be the second checkpoint. And uh, that is where you can see the modifications made. So I can minimize this. And here is what the app would look like. So within five minutes, this app is ready. But since we are using Gemini AI tool and GenKit as well, so it will require an API key, which can be added here. And it, of course, it's available for free, especially if you are just exploring this tool. So you can auto-generate that API key. So what it will do is it will give access of Gemini to this particular AI tool. API is called as Application Programming Interface. That's more of a technical term. So you don't have to get into that. Uh, just knowing that an API key will be required is enough. So you can click on Auto-Generate. So it will generate an automatic key, which can then be used to include all the Gemini AI features to this tool. So right now, if I type in Apple here and click on add food it will say that an error has occurred that is because you have not generated an api key so that is why it is required until then let's see what this tool is about the name of the tool is caltrack you can set your goal from here let's say 2000 calories here it will show consumed what is the daily gold and what are the remaining calories so now uh, the first iteration of the prototype app is ready now you can try it out in the preview window. And even now, if you want to edit the code, edit the app, you can still do it. You can click on this button and it will switch to the code view. Now this is the Firebase Studio, the traditional Firebase Studio, where users would write a code on their own over here. So if you want, you can, if you are a developer, you can also edit the code from here. There are different files. But if you're not a programmer, you don't have to worry. Just switch to Prototyper. And let AI do the work for you. Anyway, so let's add food. Let me add an apple. I don't know how many calories are there in an apple. Let's say I had it for breakfast. Automatically, the number of calories have been added here, 95 kilocalories. Let's say then for lunch, I have, um, let me think of something. Say, let's me search for chicken. Now it has been added to the log. In, in breakfast itself. So you need to change it from here if you want it to be lunch. Let me delete this. Chicken for lunch. Perfect. And for dinner, let's say I had scrambled eggs for dinner. If you don't leave it blank, um, it will. if you know the number of calories, you can definitely type it here. Let's say I had a few cashews, which had 25 calories. I had them as snacks. 
So now it will not search automatically. It will trust your input over the AI input. So this is the tool that has been created here. So you can also add your own prompts here. Like I have written that I want a series of motivational quotes with an option to refresh them endlessly. And then Gemini has made changes to these two files of the uh, directory, added 79 lines of code within a minute. And now we have this as well. Your motivational quote, if you keep refreshing it, a new one will come up. Isn't that cool? The 79 lines would have taken at least 5 to 10 minutes of a person who is writing the code. I presume. I am not a programmer. So if any one of you is a programmer, you can comment and let me know how much time this has saved. You can also annotate over this app if you want to include certain sections, if you want to have such cool designs, you can definitely do that. And you can play around. This is more of an artistic thing. You can add different shapes like this. You can also add arrows to point out to certain things. You can add lines also. Lines appear a bit sketchy. You can add random designs also. You can add some fonts. Let's say, go for it. You can erase if you want to. You can add images also if you want. Add your logo, add some other images of someone exercising, some food images, you know, beautify this entire app. You can use the frame tool to add frames to certain things. You can change the opacity. You can put it behind a layer, in front of a layer. You can delete from here also. You also have a laser pointer. So if you're discussing something with the team, if you want to discuss about the interface, you can use this laser pointer to have discussions. Now, additional instructions can also be written here. You can write certain instructions and then share this drawing with your team. So it can also be used by front-end developers to just get a starting point of how their tool or app should look like. And then you can send the drawing. If I annotated or if I had added shapes, and then send this drawing, Gemini would have incorporated those things. Without doing any of that, let me see what Gemini will still try and do. I don't know what it is trying to change. I have not changed anything. In fact, I did try to annotate, but I just removed everything. But let me still see what Gemini tries to do on its own. Can we have a set of lines added, removed? It's changing the font probably. I can see within a minute we have all these things. Look at the number of lines of course removed and added. And this is how the new interface looks like. What if we exceed the goal count? Now it shows that you are in negative. Okay. So you can play around. You can now type in a prompt that whenever it goes into negative, uh, write a warning message or something like that. So this, I think, gives you a good enough idea of what Google Firebase is all about. It's a very, very potent tool. You can also publish it from here. If I click here, where you need to create a Google Cloud billing account for that, you will get 300 free credits. You can use them to host the app, add API. Then as the user database keeps increasing, after a certain amount of uh, storage limit, a certain amount of visitors, you will be charged to make this app. And once the 300 credits are done, if you want to use app on a large scale, 
then you will have to pay to Google Cloud to be able to use app from their website. Uh, I tried making an APK if it was possible, but I did not find a way to do that. So the only way you can use the app is by visiting the website, which I will show you over here. If I click here, the app opens in a new window and this is the URL of the app, which will come over here now. So I'll add this to the description of this video and you can also take a look at this app. You can also share a preview link of the app from here. You can make the preview public uh, from here. So if I copy the preview URL, I'll add this also to the description so you can copy it into your browser and you can access this app. You can select this arrow and then you can change the, the button or anything which is there on the screen. You can describe the changes you want to make to it. Change the name to Calgary Tracker. And that has come here for element H1, change the name to category tracker. Again, it will run a code, it will change certain things in the layout. See, it happened in a matter of 10 seconds. The app automatically gets refreshed. Here it is, category tracker. So this is something which is very potent, considering that it's a free tool. It's mind-blowing how it saves so much of your time. So ever wondered that you wanted to have an app which never existed, or if you wanted to learn how apps are built, this can be a good starting point for you. Or if you just want to be a wipe coder, which means that you want to use AI and just what we have done here. All of this, what we wrote here is wipe coding. You can do that also. That's all I had to cover about this video from a non-programmer's perspective. Of course, if you are a programmer yourself, you can uh, head to this uh, coding section where you can explore the tool further and you can write your code to make the app more sophisticated. But if you are a common user like me, you can always switch back to the prototype view and then you will have the Firebase Builder along with Gemini integration. And that's more than enough for your uh, basic exploration of the tool. So that's it from this video. If you want us to cover any other videos or if you have any other feedback for us, feel free to put that in the comment section.